and welcome again to Evita at the Rhythm of My Heart. Today I prepare for you a simple step-by-step -step, uh, homemade empanada or empanadilla dough. And then I'm going to show you how to turn them into these lovely empanadilla discs uh, for your empanadas. Uh, so join me when we come back. I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step of this simple and delicious empanada or empanadilla dough. Today we're going to be making empanada or pastelillo dough from scratch and the secret to this uh, dough is to make sure all your ingredients are nice and cold so we're going to need some ice cold water, we're going to need some baking powder, garlic powder, onion powder, cold flour and this is just regular uh, all purpose flour. I'm going to be using turmeric and annatto seed powder, cream of tartar. Um, I have some shortening that I've also placed in the freezer to keep it nice and cold. And of course, we're going to need some salt. By keeping all the ingredients nice and cold, it just helps for the dough to just pull together and it's a lot easier to handle. And it also serves for a nice uh, flaky dough when you fry them. So, let's go ahead and get started. We begin by mixing all the dry ingredients in the mixing bowl and I'm going to be using a stand-up mixer uh, but you can also use a food processor or you could do it by hand uh, using two forks or a pastry cutter. Um, I also reserved about a cup of the flour and I'm going to add the flour gradually as the dough begins to uh, form so we don't want to add too much flour. Now this varies depending on the region where you live and depending on the humidity level of where you live so we're going to go ahead and Set that aside for now and now uh, I'm also gonna add the baking powder, the salt and I always give you uh, the full recipe in the description box. I have here the cream of tartar, the onion powder and the garlic powder. Now this is the time when you decide whether or not you want to make your empanadillas or empanada dough with color. Uh, at this point, if you decide that you don't want to have any color in your dough, then you go ahead and mix it as you would. Uh, but today I'm going to be making um, the empanada or empanadilla dough with color, so I'm going to be adding uh, my ingredients, um, and that will be the annatto seed powder and also the turmeric. Now there's different... Um, ways that you can add color to this dough. Uh, I find that the annatto powder um, works very well. Of course, you can use annatto seed oil if you like. Um, and this is just uh, my version and my interpretation of the recipe. You can use just about anything you like for color. And here's the uh, turmeric also. And I'm gonna fit my mixing bowl with the um, dough hook, which I also kept in the refrigerator just to make it nice and cold. We're going to begin mixing our dry ingredients. And I like to start it slowly, obviously, because you don't want all that flour to you know, fly all over the place and take a nice little flour back. Once all your dry ingredients are mixed, now we can go ahead and start by adding our shortening. And I'm going to add it a little bit at a time. And we're going to go ahead and allow it to combine with the flour. Continue adding your shortening. I like to do it 
and thirds. Shortening mixes with the flour. And after about two minutes, what you get is the flour that looks like this, sort of like a wet sand consistency. And that's what you're looking for. And now we're ready to begin adding our ice water. I'm going to start adding the water slowly and I'm going to begin with about three quarters of a cup of water and then mix and continue mixing and adding water or flour until the dough forms. feels a little sticky so we're almost there and we're going to continue mixing it and adding just a tiny bit of water just until I can get that soft uh, dough consistency. to roll around the hook that's an indication that your dough is nice and ready and if you pull it out grab a piece you can see it's nice and stretchy it still feels a little bit uh, wet slightly wet but it doesn't stick to your fingers so that is the consistency of the dough that you're looking for and you see the color that you that you have um, from using the annatto seed and also the turmeric it just gives it a nice lovely uh, orangey color or terracotta Color. I'm going to mix it for another 30 seconds or so. And we're done. There you go. Beautiful. All right. So, our dough is nice and ready. And now we can go ahead and see how easy the the hook comes out, it doesn't stick to the to the dough or the hook, and it's perfect. Check it out. That's what our dough looks like. Nice and firm, but soft. And if you pull a piece out of the dough, it stretches, it doesn't fall apart or break apart. That's what you're looking for. And you can roll it into a nice little ball, and it holds its shape. And it should, when you press on it, you should be able to get some sort of resistance from the dome. But this is exactly the consistency that you're looking for for this dome. Now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it 
um, and I'm gonna let it rest for at least half an hour before I begin working with it. Uh, remember we use shortening and we wanted to keep all the ingredients nice and cold. Um, so by allowing it to rest for at least half an hour to an hour, it just makes it a lot easier to handle when you're rolling your disc for the empanadas or the empanadillas. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it, stick it in the refrigerator for at least half an hour. After our dough has rested for about half an hour in the refrigerator, um, I like to work with small pieces. So I go ahead and cut pieces of my dough and then I begin forming uh, golf size dough balls from it, which is about the size of the empanadilla disc or empanada disc that we're gonna use. And then I just roll them into a nice little ball about this size. And once I have them all ready, then we'll be ready to roll our empanadilla or empanada this and I'm going to continue doing all these um, balls and getting them all ready and then in just a little bit I'll show you how we like to roll them. Remember I told you the trick to this is that you don't overwork your dough and once you get the hang of it uh, especially if you have a stand-up mixer uh, you'll see that this dough will require uh, when you're rolling them, very little addition of flour. Of course, I like to keep some flour for dusting on the side when I'm rolling it just in case it begins to stick, but you know, I find that most of the time I don't even have to use any flour for dusting when I'm rolling them. So I'm gonna get started um, with the discs and I'm gonna set these aside and work with them one at a time. And you know, again, like I said, you could roll the whole sheet of uh, dough if you like and then just you know cut them um, all at the same time if you want I like to work with individual pieces I think it's easier and it just makes for a better um, dough disc so I'm gonna go ahead and get my rolling pin to roll our empanada disc I'm gonna lightly flour my surface and I'm gonna be using a marble turntable you can use any surface you like and you just spread your flour and press your dough onto it and you begin to roll from the center out. As you're working with this dough, make sure you keep it nice and uh, covered because uh, you don't want it to dry out on you. But you're gonna continue rolling until you get your desired thickness for your disc. I'm gonna roll it to the other side and continue rolling. Trying to keep it as uniform as possible okay and this is almost ready I'm gonna go ahead and add a little tiny more flour just to stretch it a little bit more like so because you're, you're looking for a thickness of a uh, eighth of an inch thickness and once you have your dough to the desired thickness you're gonna be using whatever cutter you, you have on hand. I'm gonna be using this metal plate. Place it in the center. And using a pastry cutter, I'm gonna cut around it, just like this. This plate happens to be the perfect size for my empanada disc. So, it works well. Like I said, you can make these into cocktail size. You can use round cookie cutters, or whatever you have handy. And there you have it, the perfect empanada disc. Now if it starts to thick because our dough is slightly soft, um, notice it, it is a little softer, of course it's not frozen. If you're gonna freeze them, you take a piece of parchment paper and very carefully you lift it and you place it on the parchment like that. Try to keep the shape and then you layer them just like that. Once you have all your discs ready, you can wrap them in some plastic wrap or and place them in a zip bag and keep them in the freezer and it stays fresh for months. Uh, so there you have it, my version of homemade empanada or pastelillo dough. And here is the finished rolled empanadilla or empanada disc. Now since this dough recipe yields between 40 to 50 discs, depending on the size that you cut them, 
Um, what I like to do is I like to store them in stacks of 10. So I roll them, wrap them in some uh, saran wrap and place them in zip bags and then just keep them in the freezer and they're ready for my use when we're ready or in the mood for some homemade empanadas. So there you have it. I hope you like this recipe. And if you do, please remember to leave your comments on the uh, section down below. And now that we have our discs ready, I'm going to show you uh, how we like to uh, roll them so you can see the finished uh, empanadilla or empanada. Uh, you take your favorite filling. I have here some picadillo and potato filling, uh, but you could use any kind of filling you like. Chicken, shrimp, cheese, uh, vegetables. It's really up to you. And go ahead and place some of our stuffing or filling in the center or on the side. Just like that. Okay, take about a tablespoon and a half of filling. Now you don't want to overfill them because they will burst when you cook them. And you also, the trick to making empanadillas or empanadas, you want to make sure you don't get the filling too close to the sides or to the edges um, because you want to be able to fold them. And we'll go ahead and fold it, press, okay, pull the paper. Just like that. And of course, using a fork, we just go ahead and press them. Just like that. Okay. Now, if you're not too sure whether or not your empanadilla or pastelillo is sealed, you can do both sides just to be sure. But these, I know, are sealed pretty well. You can see them if you look closely. They're pretty nicely sealed. And there you have it, homemade empanada or empanadilla dough, evita style. Here we go, so we're ready for the fryer. And here we have our finished empanadillas or empanadas using my homemade empanada dough. As always, this is Evita cooking at the rhythm of my heart. Until next time, buen provecho y hasta la próxima.